I am Garima Jain from India. I work for Godaddy Studio as a principal Android engineer and I'm also a Google developer expert in Android. As part of the math skills series on architecture, I wanted to share a tip about creating separate data models based on various architectural layers in your project. We'll be calling these data models entities. Here goes my tip. I suggest creating one or more separate entities per layer in the project for a clean and scalable model architecture. The reason for this is different layers in the app have different responsibilities. For a given type of data, each layer will most likely need layer specific attributes to perform its tasks. Examples of such entities are a remote user entity at the data layer and a user UI state entity at the UI layer. Assuming that your project is divided into these layers as suggested in the guide to app architecture, ideally each layer in the project should have one or more unique entities. And here's how separating entities works out best in my experience. First, remote entities. These are entities defined to represent the JSON response coming in from server or network API. Database entities. These represent database entities fetched from the database if a database is present in your project. Domain entities. If a domain layer is present in your project, then these are your business models. UI state entities, your state model per screen. And additionally, mapper classes to map between various entities. This is optional. Now to understand this better, we will touch upon various advantages of doing this. And in order to do that, we will start with an example. Let's say that the response we're getting from server looks like this. This is an example of remote API entity that we have created for a user response. We have a user object, which has its own ID, username, token, inventory, and profile, along with some additional data that we have omitted for the purpose of this video. Here's how the profile object looks like. With some mixed casing coming in from the server, for example, profile image URL field, we use add serialized name to map it to camel case field names. And here's how the inventory list looks like. Within the response, there is a list of inventory items, which each can have its own ID, name, etc. Now, if you want to try to save user object to database like room directly without mapping it to a new entity, here's how our database entity would look like. Let's say that we do not want to possess the token to database since we want to store it somewhere securely. So we add at the annotation, ignore to it. We also do not want to save inventory object as part of user object since it will be a separate room entity. We also do not want to possess user profile to database yet since it is not used within our app. So we add an add the rate ignore annotation to it as well. This approach clutters our database entity and could cause confusion. So we should create a separate entity in such cases. Here's how our converted database entity looks like, which contains just the data we need. Doesn't it look cleaner? So advantages of data entities. All the entities contain just the required data. The remote entities could have extra objects which need not be persisted. So say goodbye to add the rate ignore annotations within your database entities now. Now let's create a domain entity for the user's inventory object. By creating domain entities, one could write business rules and separate these rules into different modules, which could even be pure Kotlin modules. These have the benefits of potentially improving build times and being able to share entities across multiple platforms. This step is optional and can be decided on a project to project basis. One could also create the same entity as a UI entity instead within our UI layer. Now let's say that we want to pass the inventory object from one screen to another in Android. We will need the ID to fetch the details of the inventory item from the server, and we need its name to be shown in the toolbar while we're fetching the details from the server. By having a separate domain or UI entity while passing data from one screen to another, we can add add parcelized annotation to it and send only limited data and need not bulk the parse labels. Send only what you need to since there is a limit to the amount of data that can be passed. Now let's look at an example of where creating UI entities is quite helpful. We want to show user inventory as a list and the user can select one inventory item out of those. In such cases, creating separate UI state has various advantages. 
UI entity could have a state-related data, for example, from a list of available inventory, a single inventory is selected at a time. So we could keep a selected Boolean within the UI state. By having a UI state for a recycler view list item could also help with efficient diffing with just the data we need. You can see how creating different entities in different parts of the code base can have several advantages. Apart from these, the app becomes much more maintainable because if you want to swap out a remote API with another one, in such cases, the changes remain limited to just the API layer and everything else remains the same. Also, if there are UI changes, only the UI layer needs to know about such changes and again, rest, everything remains the same. While there are so many advantages, just like two sides of a coin, there are certain disadvantages to this as well, such as first, Creating and maintaining these entities could add to development time. Having multiple entities could cause confusion among developers on which entity to use. Mapping between different entities to pass them around all the time could get cumbersome. I understand that such layering could be overwhelming and might not be beneficial for small scale projects, but for large scale projects, this type of layering has always proved to be super helpful in my experience. For such projects, in order to mitigate these disadvantages, it is beneficial to document and standardize such approaches and rules within a team so that the whole team can adopt similar naming convention and rules about separating such entities. Apart from that, since different entities provide different advantages, use the ones that might benefit you the most. I think these are still the minimum ones that should be separated out in a project. Add the data layer, remote entity, and a database entity if there's a database in your project. UI state at the UI layer or a domain entity as well if domain layer is present. So happy separating. This was my tip about clean and scalable entities. Hope you enjoyed it and will apply in your next project. Coming up next on this math skill series is a live Q&A on Thursday, where the Android team answers all your questions on architecture. You can ask your questions now using hashtag AskAndroid on Twitter. Bye. Thank you.